Welcome back. In this video, we're going to add and subtract rational expressions. And adding and subtracting fractions is a little bit more complicated than multiplying and dividing. As you can see, if we have a couple of fractions, x over z plus y over z, adding those two fractions, if we have a common denominator z, we can simply just add the numerators. Well, the same thing goes for subtraction. If we have a common denominator, we can simply subtract one fraction from the other. So we have, you know, x minus y all over z. Well, this is true when fractions have a common denominator. It's easy to add or subtract them. Uh, unfortunately, many times our fractions do not have a common denominator. So if we want to add or subtract them, we need to get ourselves in a position where we have a common denominator. We need them to be the same. And of course, when we add and subtract fractions, then we leave the denominator alone and only add or subtract the numerators. So once we have a common denominator, we don't add and subtract the denominators. So the first thing we want to do is let's take a look at the process for finding the lowest common denominator. So first thing we'll want to do is factor the denominator. And then we'll determine the product, product is multiplication, of the highest power of every factor that results from factoring all the denominators. I usually work on a what do we need basis. What does this denominator need? What does this denominator need? So once you get things factored, be ready to ask yourself, what do I need to make one denominator exactly like the other denominator? So let's take a look at the two fractions, 2 ninths and 7 fifteenths. Some of you can eyeball the common denominator, but I'm going to run through the process here. So 9, we know 9 is 3 squared. And we know 15 is 3 times 5. Well, we, want, we need the highest power of everything that shows up. So in 15, it has 3 and 5. So we need a 5 on the 9 side. So for the 9, we need a 5. And for the 15, we have two factors of 3. We only have 1. So on this side, we need a 3. So our common denominator is 9 times 5, or 45. So if we want to write these as equivalent fractions, if I need a 5 here on the left side with 2 ninths, I would multiply that by 5 over 5. 5 over 5 is 1. So I'm not changing the value of that fraction, it's maintaining the same location on the number line. But I'm changing what it looks like. So that fraction is 10 over 45. And on the right-hand side, I determined I needed a 3, so I multiply that by 3 over 3. And that equivalent fraction then is 21 over 45. They have a common denominator. Now if I wanted to, I could add or subtract my fractions. But you'll see we multiply by what we need, both top and bottom, okay, numerator and denominator, because that value is 1. So it doesn't change the location of this fraction on the number line. 21 45ths is the equivalent of 7 fifteenths. So let's take a look at another one. 5 over 6x cubed, 11 over 8x to the fifth, and I can see right here that's 2 cubed, x to the fifth, and this is 2 times 3 times x to the third. So on the left-hand side, well, I need two more factors of x, so I need x squared, and I need, another, I need two more factors of 2. So I have to multiply that by 4x squared over 4x squared, it looks like. On the left side, I need, well, I don't need any more x's. Um, I need a 3. 3, well, my common denominator should be 24x to the fifth. And I end up with 20x squared 
over 4x squared times 2 times 3, so that's 24x to the fifth. And my other equivalent fraction, 33, 11 times 3, all over 24x to the fifth. So I've rewritten my two fractions with a common denominator, so I have equivalent fractions to what I had before. Let's take a look at our process for adding and subtracting rational expressions, or adding and subtracting fractions. If there's not a common denominator, we're going to have to determine the LCD. And then we're going to write each fraction, as we did above, as an equivalent fraction with our new common denominator. Now, I have a note here to be careful, do not cancel at this point. Uh, there's sometimes a tendency for math students to cancel because they see, oh, I can cross-cancel. We don't want to do that. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we do the sample problems. If you're not careful, you'll end up canceling your common denominator. Then we add or subtract only the numerators because we have a common denominator. And be careful with subtraction. Subtraction is going to be fraught with peril. You have to remember to take the opposite of every term. Then we will simplify the numerator. You may be able to factor the numerator. And then finally, at this point, you can cancel any common factors in the numerator and the denominator by applying our fundamental principle of rational expressions. And remember, only cancel after you have simplified. Okay, so we're simplifying here we cancel at the end. Okay, our common error is to cancel early. So let's take a look at some of our sample problems. So we want to add these two fractions, 5 over 8x plus 11 over 10x squared. Okay, I'm going to go on the needs basis here. Uh, it looks like our common denominator is, uh, it looks like our common denominator would be 40 x squared. So in order to get this denominator to 40x squared, I need a 5 and I need another factor of x. So I'm going to multiply that fraction by 5x over 5x and I'm going to expect you to show that work. And to get this to 40x squared, we're going to need uh, a 4. So we multiply that one by 4 over 4. So my new numerator is 25x all over my denominator 40x squared plus 44 over 40x squared. So I just add my numerators, my final answer, 25x plus 44 all over my common denominator 40x squared. So no simplifying here, that's already simplified. Uh, there's nothing we can cancel. We can't simplify the 44 and the 40. That would be canceling terms and not factors. So uh, we are finished there. Sample problem 2, 5 over 7x plus 2 over x plus 1. Now you might think, oh, we need a 7 on this side, and we do. But our denominators are 7x and x plus 1. So this side needs the entire factor x plus 1, and this side needs the entire factor 7x. So our common denominator is, pardon me, our common denominator is 7x times the quantity x plus 1. That's our common denominator. So I will multiply the left-hand side by x plus 1 over x plus 1. I will multiply the right-hand side by 7x over 7x. So we have 5 times the quantity x plus 1 all over 7x times x plus 1 plus 14x all over x plus 7x times x plus 1, our common denominator. I'm going to distribute the 5x and we're going to have 5x, or pardon me, I'm going to distribute the 5. So we have 5x plus 5 plus 14x all over our common denominator. I can do a better fraction bar than that. All over our common denominator of 
7x times x plus 1. I have to still simplify my numerator, so I get 19x plus 5 all, all over 7x times x plus 1. And that is my final answer. That is simplified, and there's nothing left for me to cancel. Let's take a look at some, some subtraction problems. Now, this one, I, I need a common denominator. It looks like I'm going to have to do some factoring here. x squared minus 9 is a difference of two squares. So this is going to factor to x plus 3 times x minus 3. My other denominator is x plus 3. So I need an x minus 3 on my right-hand side here. I already have a common denominator here. The x plus 3, x minus 3 is my common denominator. So I have 10x all over x plus 3 times x minus 3, and we want to leave our denominators factored. Minus 5 times x minus 3 all over our common denominator, x plus 3 times x minus 3. This minus sign, now be careful, is fraught with peril because I'm going to multiply a negative 5 times x and a negative 5 times negative 3. So be careful with that. So my numerator becomes 10x minus 5x plus 15 all over my common denominator of x plus 3 times x minus 3. Simplify my numerator. 10x minus 5x is 5x plus 15 all over my common denominator. I can still factor a 5 out of that, out of my numerator. So I have 5 times x plus 3 all over x plus 3 times x minus 3. And now you might see why we left our denominator factored. I have a common factor of x plus 3 that I can cancel. I can apply the fundamental principle and the x plus 3's cancel and my final answer is 5 all over x minus 3. Another subtraction problem. It looks like we have different denominators here, x minus 6 and 6 minus x. Some of you guys might recognize that as opposites, though. The denominator on the left is a positive x and a negative 6. The denominator on the right has a positive 6 and a negative x. So what I will do is I will factor out a negative 1 out of the one on the left. So I end up with 10 over x minus 6 minus 15 all over the opposite of x minus 6. So now I have a common denominator of x minus 6. My minus a minus becomes a plus. So this minus a minus becomes a plus. So now I have 10 plus 15 all over my common denominator of x minus 6. So my final answer 25 over x minus 6. And that's my final answer. Another addition problem, a little bit more complicated. 6x over x squared plus 4x plus 4 over plus x over x squared minus 4. Looks like we've got some factoring to do. We factor first. So 6x all over our perfect square trinomial x plus 2 quantity squared plus x over x plus 2 times x minus 2. So looking at my common denominator, you can eyeball this or do the needs question. What does the left side need? Well, it already has two x plus 2, so it doesn't need any more, but it does need an x minus 2. So I will multiply the left side by x minus 2 over x minus 2. And the right side needs another x plus 2, so I'll multiply that by x plus 2 over x plus 2. 
And again, I expect you to show this work. Common denominators don't, don't just appear magically. This is the algebra that takes place. I'm multiplying the left side by 1, but x minus 2 over x minus 2, and the right side by 1, but x plus 2 over x plus 2. Show your work. My common denominator is x minus 2 times x plus 2 quantity squared. So I have 6x times x minus 2 plus x times x plus 2 all over my common denominator. And when they get long like this, I'll let you write common denominator. I can see it here. You've shown your work. I need to simplify the numerators, so I have to multiply in. Looks like I have 6x squared minus 12x plus x squared plus 2x all over my common denominator. I need to combine my x squareds. So that's 7x squared minus 10x all over my common denominator. This is getting long. Now you guys see why I encourage you to work vertically down the page. We work down the page. I can factor out an x out of there. So I have x times 7x minus 10 all over my common denominator. I think I'm all finished. So my common denominator comes back x plus 2 quantity squared times x minus 2. And nothing else can cancel, so there is my final answer. Well, wow, that's a long and good problem. Let's do one more subtraction problem. Again, let's go ahead and factor first. So I need to factor my denominator to find the common denominator. So 4 over, factor out an x, I get 3x plus 2 minus 3x, looks like you can factor a 4 out of there, and I get 4 times x plus 2, so 3x plus 2, and our right-hand side, that appears to need an x over x. Our common denominator is 4x times 3x plus 2. Our right side needs a 4 over 4, 4x times 3x plus 2. Looks like we're in pretty good shape here. So 4 times 4 is 16 minus 3x squared all over our common denominator of 4x times the quantity 3x plus 2. I don't have any common factors here. Because we have a negative x squared or negative 3x squared, some of you might factor out a negative 1 here, and we're left with 3x squared minus 16 all over our common denominator, 4x times 3x plus 2. That would be okay. This looks like a difference of two squares. Unfortunately, 3 is not a perfect square, so this is not factorable. There are no x's or anything to cancel, no more common factors. So that would be a fine final answer. And that wraps up our sample problems for adding and subtracting fractions, and we will see you in class.